Lesson 12, the habits of a steward. Habits are not natural. Like a basketball player, they will train to learn to dribble and to shoot to the point where it becomes a habit. Or a musician who perseveres learning the notes of different instruments and its sound until it becomes a natural habit. As stewards, we have habits that are required of us to reflect the God-given life that He intended for us to live. Are you willing to go and train and persevere the habits that God asks of you to be stewards for the kingdom? Here is Apisaru to guide you through our lesson. Psalms 119 verse 9 to 11 tells us how we can detox our life. It specifically outlines how we can cleanse our hearts and lifestyles. First, it says, follow what the Bible tells us about living. Next, Seek God with our whole heart, our hearts and minds, praying that the Holy Spirit will reveal the right choices from the many options that we have. And the final step, it says, is to ask God to help us to not be distracted along the life's journeys by the many things that would separate us from the heart of God. And at the heart of these three steps is knowing Scripture, the Bible, very well, which we do by studying it daily. Daily personal study builds up a bank account of divine wisdom. You see, to become a trustworthy steward of God in the face of society's consumerism and self-indulgence, you need to train like an athlete. Let's go to the gym, Robert. We need to train at making God our priority. We do this by spending time with Him daily, before doing anything else. Also, by returning full tithe on our income and resting or recovering every seventh day. Together, all these three things will increase our stewardship capacity. These spiritual capacity building activities have a common factor, trust. Trust that God will bless and expand the resources we have left, be it the time left after worshiping Him, the income left after tithing, and efficiency of our lives after participating in a full day off. In this, there is no better example than Daniel the consummate steward, the pinnacle of trustworthiness. His capacity for stewardship was developed from his routine of prayer. For contemporary examples, look at William Colgate, founder of the Colgate Company, a faithful tithe pair, or Henry Crowell of Quaker Oats, and John Rockefeller, the first American billionaire who faithfully tithed from his first pay of $1.50 through to the millions he made later. You need to look no further than the Fiji men's rugby sevens gold medalist in Rio. A to their achievement was their commitment to the spiritual. As a group, they prayed both asking God for his favor and thanking him for it. Paul in his letter to the church at Corneth encouraged the faltering believers there to run the race of life such that they each might receive the winner's prize. And everyone who competes for the prize expresses self-control in all things. Their lives are the composite result of positive habits. While everything is permissible, not everything is beneficial, he says. He knew the payoff for investing 
in positive patterns and habits.